The Hungerford Massacre was a spree shooting in Hungerford, England, United Kingdom, on the 19th of August, 1987, when 27-year-old Michael Ryan shot and killed 16 people, including an unarmed police officer and his own mother before shooting himself. The shootings, committed using a handgun and two semi-automatic rifles, occurred at several locations, including a school he had once attended. Fifteen other people were also shot, but survived. No firm motive for the killings has ever been established. A report on the massacre was commissioned by Home Secretary Douglas Hurd. The Firearms Amendment Act 1988 was passed in the wake of the incident, which bans the ownership of semi-automatic center-fire rifles and restricts the use of shotguns with a capacity of more than three cartridges. The shootings remain one of the deadliest firearms incidents in British history. After his mother left home to run errands on the morning of the 19th of August, Ryan drove his Vauxhall Astra GTE to Savernack Forest, Wiltshire, seven miles to the west of Hungerford. In his car, he carried his Beretta pistol, M1 carbine rifle, and Type 56 semi-automatic rifle. That day, 35-year-old Susan Godfrey and her two preschool children had traveled from Bergfield Common near Reading and were picnicking in the forest. At 12.30 BST, Ryan, openly armed, approached the family, and Susan placed the children in her car. After abducting her at gunpoint, Ryan walked Godfrey 75 100 yards into the forest. He had placed down a ground sheet. A police report identified the possibility that Ryan had intended to rape Godfrey. Ryan shot her 13 times. An ear witness recognized the shots as coming from a semi-automatic weapon. Godfrey's children were found by a woman walking in the woods. 16. Their mother's body was found approximately 10 yards from the ground sheet. There was no evidence of sexual assault. Ryan left the forest and drove east on the A4, stopping to fill both his car and a petrol can at the Golden Arrow petrol station in Froxfield at approximately 12.35. After another customer at the station left, Ryan shot at the cashier from the forecourt. He entered the store and attempted to shoot her at point-blank range. This failed when his gun apparently jammed. He left the petrol station and the cashier telephoned 999. This call had been preceded by another emergency call, possibly by a member of the public who believed they saw an armed robbery at the petrol station. Thames Valley Police sent three patrol cars along the A4 to investigate. After leaving Froxfield, Ryan returned to his home on Southview, Hungerford, Berkshire. Arriving there shortly after 1245, he was seen by neighbors who described him as looking upset. Soon after entering his house, one of the witnesses heard gunshots. Ryan had shot the two family dogs. He exited the house with equipment such as ammunition, survival equipment, and a flak jacket. He failed to start his car and instead returned to the house and set the living room alight using the petrol he purchased from Froxfield. The resultant fire destroyed the house and three adjacent properties. Leaving the house, he headed east on South View towards school playing fields. En route, he shot and killed two of his neighbors, Roland and Sheila Mason. 14-year-old Lisa Mildenhall, who also lived nearby, heard the noise and went to see what it was. Ryan shot her four times in the legs. She sought first aid from her mother and another nearby resident and survived. Ryan was chastised by 77-year-old Dorothy Smith for scaring everybody to death for making noise, although he did not shoot her. Ryan then wounded Marjorie Jackson, one of the people who had seen him arrive home in her back. She telephoned her friend George White for help and asked him to collect her husband Ivor from work in Newbury. Past the playing fields, Ryan entered the town's common. He shot and killed 51-year-old Kenneth Clements, who had been walking his dog with his family. The family escaped without injury. At this time, approximately 1250, police had linked the incident in Froxfield to the many calls they received in Hungerford and instead focused on Southview. Ryan returned to Southview from the common, and the first police officers to arrive aimed to close both ends of the road to contain a possible gunman. These officers were unarmed, and when Ryan saw the police response, he shot one of the officers, PC Roger Brereton, in the chest. Brereton, who was in his patrol car, crashed into a telegraph pole. At 12.58, Ryan shot and killed him while he was using his radio to report an active shooter. Still on Southview, Ryan next shot at Linda Chapman and her daughter Allison, who had just turned onto the lane in their Volvo. Both were struck. 
although Linda was able to reverse the car out of the road. Ryan next opened fire on Linda Bright and Hazel Hazlitt in an ambulance that was responding to 999 calls on Southview. Both Bright and Hazlitt escaped without major injury. After this, two of Brereton's colleagues securing the east end of Southview came upon Robert, Kenneth Clements's son, who informed them that the shooter had continued west on Southview. Heading to investigate, Ryan shot at the constables. One took shelter in a house and the other, with Robert Clements, drove across the common to safety. At 1312, this officer radioed to request support from Thames Valley Police's Tactical Firearms Unit, having seen the firearms Ryan was using. The TFU was on a training exercise some 38 miles from Hungerford and would not have all its members respond until 1420. The officer, PC Jeremy Wood, set up a makeshift command post on the common, approximately 500 yards from Southview. Ryan next shot at George White, who had returned from Newbury having collected Marjorie Jackson's husband Ivor from work. Driving his Toyota into Southview, Ryan shot and killed White instantly and caused severe injuries to Ivor Jackson, who feigned death and survived his injuries. Ryan then walked to the junction of Southview and Fairview Road, where he shot and killed 84-year-old Abdul Khan, who was tending his garden. After firing at and injuring a pedestrian on Fairview Road, Ryan headed back towards the common. One of the police officers in attendance, PC Bernard Maggs, made another 999 call, but by this point the telephone network had reached its capacity. On Southview, Ryan's mother Dorothy returned in her car to see him armed. She shouted for him to stop before he shot her four times with his Beretta, twice at point-blank range. On heading towards the common, a resident of a parallel street shouted at Ryan to, Kindly stop that racket! He responded by shooting her in the groin. At 1318, P.C. Wood was joined by two armed police officers at the command post on the common. Two minutes later, they saw Ryan at the War Memorial Recreation Grounds on the edge of the common. Near the War Memorial Recreation Grounds, Ryan shot 26-year-old Francis Butler as he walked his dog. At this point, he discarded the carbine, it having been useless since jamming in Froxfield. A witness gave Butler first aid, but he died before an ambulance arrived. Ryan next shot at but missed teenager Andrew Cadle, who was on his bicycle. On reaching Bullpit Lane, Ryan killed taxi driver Marcus Barnard, who was en route home to see family between fares. Ryan headed north on Priory Avenue, where he shot and injured John Storms, who was parked in his van. By this time, police had set up road diversions, and some of Ryan's victims were drivers affected by these change of routes. Douglas and Kathleen Wainwright, visiting their son on Priory Avenue, were forced to approach from the south, where Ryan was. Approximately 100 yards from their destination, Ryan shot Douglas dead and injured Kathleen before non-fatally shooting at two other drivers. A van entered Priory Avenue and the occupants, Eric Vardy and Stephen Ball, were shot at. Vardy was killed. At 13.30, Ryan headed southwest towards Priory Road, shooting at houses as he passed them. Using the Beretta, he shot at a passing car and fatally injured the driver, 22-year-old Sandra Hill. After shooting Hill, Ryan shot his way into a house further down Priory Road and shot the occupants, 66-year-old Jack Gibbs and his 62-year-old wife Myrtle. Jack was killed instantly, and Myrtle died two days later at the Princess Margaret Hospital in Swindon. From the house, Ryan shot at neighboring houses and caused injury to the occupants. Ryan continued south on Priory Road where he shot once at a car driven by 34-year-old Ian Playl, who was fatally struck in the neck. His wife and their two children escaped injury. Playl died at the Radcliffe Infirmary in Oxford two days later. At 13.45, the police helicopter arrived and broadcast warnings to the public. One Hungerford resident heard the warning before heading to Priory Road to check on his grandchildren. He took them indoors to safety before being non-fatally shot in both the shoulder and the eye. Ryan continued southeast on Priory Road, firing at a house before reaching John O'Gaunt School. Ryan was seen approaching the school where he had formerly been a pupil, although his precise location was unknown. At this point, the TFU secured gardens and houses in the area before surrounding the school at approximately 16 o'clock. At 1640, they heard a gunshot within a school building, and more officers went to the scene. The police first saw Ryan at the school at 1726, shortly after he had thrown his Norinko out of a third-floor window. 
Ryan became engaged in conversation with a sergeant within the TFU and informed them of his arsenal and ammunition, claiming that he had a grenade as well as the Beretta. He said that he would not exit the building until the police informed him of the welfare of his mother and stated that Hungerford must be a bit of a mess. The sergeant said he understood Ryan when he claimed that his mother's death was a mistake. Ryan reportedly replied, How can you understand? I wish I had stayed in bed. He later shouted, It's funny. I killed all those people, but I haven't the guts to blow my own brains out. At 1852, after a few minutes of silence, a muffled shot was heard from the school building. Ryan was subsequently unresponsive to police. Shortly after 20 o'clock, armed police entered a barricaded schoolroom to find Ryan below the window having shot himself in the right temple. 